you've probably seen a lot of unboxing videos and other, uh, well, videos about the Canon SX, Canon PowerShot SX730. This video is uh, how to use it in manual. Um, the functions are limited, but they're there. And actually, I welcome them. It gives me a chance to fiddle around with the camera. I'm using a different camera to video this, and I could use it right now. These black on the camera body is not quite black. I could override that uh, with manual mode on the... But it's too much of a pain to use in this camera. So, a lot of the manual controls take place here. And there's a ring. I just want to point out there's a ring around here. This little circle is knurled, and I can twist it. And that will be used later. So let me show you some of the... Uh, manual features on the Canon SX730. There are plenty of times you may want to use manual. Um, if you have the time, uh, you may want to do something. You know, the camera is very good in automatic mode, right? 99% of the time you can shoot in automatic mode, but occasionally you want to do something or you're looking for an effect that you need manual on to override. So the rules in photography are the same. There's a couple of uh, controls on a camera. One is aperture. Aperture is the opening that the light comes in. It's either small or it's large. And that's the amount of light it's gonna let in, the quantity or the flow rate of the light. The second is the shutter. The shutter opens and closes. So you have duration there. You have the aperture, let in a lot of light, let it in for a while, let it in quickly, quick exposure. And then there's manual focus. So I'm gonna look at those. There's also the image exposure, the sensitivity of the uh, film or CCD, charge couple device. That's another variable. But right now I'm just gonna talk about uh, aperture, shutter, and focus. Okay, we're looking at the uh, SX70 display, the, uh, the, dis the display on the back of the camera. And right now this is in auto mode. And I'm gonna turn the knob on the top of the camera brings up this display and I'm going to turn it to program mode. This allows me some manual uh, features. And what I can do here is I can press this uh, four-way toggle up and it brings up a display on the bottom. Down here, down here, which allows me to change uh, some of the settings. You can see the uh, is it showing? Yeah. It's showing how much I can overexpose or underexpose. You see that little green dot moving across here? Uh, I'm modifying the exposure to the way I want it. If I want a little lighter, a little darker, I can set this up using this. Now, the camera's doing the rest of the uh, calculations for me. It's deciding what to do. And maybe that's not acceptable for some people. Maybe they want more control. So I'm gonna turn the top knob again and I'm gonna to go to TV, it says, here, I'll show that again. Well, I can do it. I'm gonna to go to TV. That's time variable mode, and uh, which allows me to adjust the shutter speed. Now it's displaying the shutter speed down here, and if I go back to that knurled ring that I talked about before, I can turn that and it will adjust the shutter speed. And I can decide if I want, it's gonna try and compensate for it. And you may or may not succeed when you press the shutter halfway and it'll let you. Okay, uh, let's see here. Yeah, okay, so I can, I can adjust the speed of the shutter within reason. There's only so much you can do, uh, but it will allow me to take a um, shutter priority photo. Now I'm going to switch to, let me circulate this back down to about 120. I'm going to switch to aperture variable. And this one shows me the f-stop over here, the aperture opening. And I can adjust that. It'll allow me to adjust it. And uh, there is my, now it, it's automatically setting the shutter speed to match up. Uh, it'll only go so far. But, you know, if I want a shallow depth of field, I would go to 3.3 aperture, which is the smallest opening. And I can turn that all the way up for maximum depth of field, which would be f8. So that's uh, another adjustment you can do. You can pick your shutter speed or your aperture. 
Now there is another one, another setting on a twisted knob on top, and I'm in manual exposure now. Now manual exposure gives you both. Uh, there's two displays over here. One is the f-stop, one is the shutter speed. And I'm going to again turn that knurled ring, and I'm adjusting the shutter speed. And that, of course, is going to allow me to overexpose or underexpose. This is full manual. And if I flip a button, it switches over to aperture control. And I, I don't know, the lighting here is a little screwed in there. There we go. Uh, I can change the aperture and the shutter speed will remain the same. So I have that control also. So you need a little time to set these up. They are usable though. I mean, I can, I can set these things up in a few seconds. And you know, if I'm looking for a particular effect, I can do that. So while this is not a SLR where you have a dedicated shutter knob and dedicated um, aperture knob, I can get access to those controls. So now I'm gonna flip from aperture I press this button once and it switches back over to shutter. Uh, and I'm going to allow it to overexpose or underexpose depending on my whim. Uh, so those are the manual overrides. Hopefully you found this more informative than an unboxing video. Uh, okay. Well, that's all I had to show you on this. Another thing, this camera, um, again, the SX730 is uh, an extreme telephoto camera. You can buy this camera, it'll do up to a thousand millimeter telephoto. Um, at those lengths, I have to stress, you're gonna need a tripod. Uh, it's a challenge for the photographer to shoot at long, long magnification like that, and it's a challenge for the camera. But I like that challenge, and uh, I, I love it. I like fooling around with the manual settings. So for me, it's not an issue. Uh, my point is, just because you bought it, doesn't mean it's going to produce a good picture. With this camera, some of that's up to you. Okay, I'm indoors now. Uh, I'm going to show how you use the camera in, uh, in manual focus. So if you push the left button here, it brings up these symbols. You have macro, uh, normal shooting, and manual. All you do is rotate the knob to bring it over to manual focus and then now I can use the knob to focus the camera manually and it'll give me the distance. So now it's, it's enlarged the, uh, the image to bring up a focal point. <clears throat> so you have to pick your subject carefully. Uh, I'll pick the spots on this banana here if I can get that. Hold on. Got that tripod. It's the center is the uh, is the focus point, and I'm going to use the focus. Let's see if I can get it. Well, I don't see them going in and out of focus, but that's what it's for. Uh, let's see if it has focus confirmation too. I don't see it. I expect this to be out of focus. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now it's out of focus. I'm going to focus using the thumb wheel. I'm going to... I don't see focus verification. I'm sure it has that. Okay. So, times you may want to use this are... Um, uh, when I the following video is of a zoom I took of the moon. I couldn't get the camera to focus until I went to manual focus and put it on infinity. Uh, the camera's getting confused. So uh, if you're shooting the moon, you may want to use manual.